Welcome to the Zero D Nanostructures Lecture, aka we're talking about nanoparticles. And the definition for something to be zero D is that it has to be less than 100 nanometers in all three dimensions. And first, as a little recap, what is matter again and why do we really care about it? Well, we care about matter in material science because we're always trying to make things stronger, better, faster, because that's the human, that's human nature. We're trying to make life easier and live longer, more fulfilling in that way. So anyways, that's why humans are curious about what can new materials do. There's two basic ways that you can make nanostructures. What do you suppose they are? Well, you can either chip away off of something large and the small little pieces are the nanostructures or you can actually use what's called beaker chemistry and basically build the nanostructures atom by atom. So there's some different techniques. When you're doing this chipping away at something large, um, there's different techniques called milling, quenching, and lithography. As far as growing crystals, we're really talking about chemistry here. And you can grow 0D, 1D, or 2D nanostructures. Let's talk about the top-down appro uh, approaches. The first one, you may have had a rock tumbler as a kid. It's the little uh, thing that's happening in the upper right corner. You, It was cool. When I was a kid, I had one. Um, you put in rocks, and there's all these like little things in it that basically smooth out your rocks and it just tumbles like all night long and then the next morning you get to take them out and you're you're amazed by how smooth your rocks are um, because the little parts chip away at them so it's not that great because what you end up have happening is you don't get uniformity in your nanoparticles there's a lot of size distribution and they're not all the same shape there's also some impurities uh, from the milling technique as you can imagine so the purity isn't there. There's also another technique uh, it's called repeated quenching. You basically melt something down, re-solidify it, you can dissolve it, evaporate away uh, part of the liquid and you repeat that process over and over again. It's also not that great um, because you're limited to materials that have certain properties like they can melt or they can dissolve but that is another technique you may hear about. Um, it's also difficult to control the size and shape, just like with milling. And finally, there's lithography. And lithography is much, much better, and it gets its own lecture because um, it's complicated. So what about bottom-up? Things are energetically driven to grow. If you've taken AP Chemistry, you've learned a lot about thermodynamics. But when we're talking about growing 0D nanostructures, there are really three stages. First, you need a super saturated solution. Think you're trying to make rock candy, so you have a lot of sugar dissolved in a small amount of water. Something called nucleation starts to happen, where basically, because there are so many things, so many atoms dissolved in that liquid or present in that liquid, things will start to grow. The sites where the growing happens are called nucleation sites. And the third stage is, of course, growth. You can stop growing, uh, stop the growth based on limiting how many chemicals are in there and also provide something that only allows for a limited space for growth. And we'll talk about that um, a little bit more later. Here's what you're looking for. You usually want nanostructures that are the same size, they are the same shape, they are the same chemical composition and crystal structure, and another term for this is that they're monodispersed, meaning that they're all singles, they're not agglomerated. Um, when we talk about nanoparticles agglomerating, that means they basically clump up together. So we want homogeneous nucleation. So again, the supersaturated solution, like when you make rock candy, um, is a great technique to use, but there is some, there's some competition. So 
if you want to keep things small, that's hard to do because things want to grow because there's this really high surface energy, which is not stable. And then there's the volume energy. This is the opposite. This is as particles get larger, they get happier. So you can see on this little chart here, there's basically um, a place where something's got to give. And you get to an energetically favorable uh, size of things. Okay, and if you want to get more into it, you can read up on Gibbs free energy and how exactly this equation works, um, but we're not going to get into that in this class. Here's an example of some nanoparticles, some nano cubes, and we did some activities in class. Uh, here's another description of how the percentage of surface atoms increases as things get smaller. So here as the diameter gets smaller, the percentage of surface atoms reaches 100%. Okay, so again, just to repeat, things with a large surface area are unstable. So they're driven to grow. Okay, so what are some tricks you can do to keep things small? Um, what's really cool is you can cause things to adsorb these ions on the outside of them. And this basically causes the same charge in these two particles to repel each other. So you can keep things really small. You can also put polymers on the outside of a structure, such as this one, and this can help keep them uh, apart because you can imagine with these long tails, two nanoparticles can't get very close together. And finally, this goes over the technique that we're going to be doing in class with making colloidal gold. And I recommend if you weren't present for the lab to make sure that you read the procedure and go over that with me in class. So I'm going to skip over that for now. And that is it for this part.